here. Oh, and, uh, well, see, yeah. we did, I, that's, you're speaking my language. I love that. That's my game. The one yeah. off the wall, right? The one where you can hit off the back wall. Is that exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's my game. That's We're going to have to play maybe some gambling. Uh, who knows? I, I I don't know. How good are you? Um, I don't know. If you're, I mean, I'm pretty good in, in uh, decent. I'm decent. I mean, I've seen actually Gus Hansen and Elis Persson, and they play it like, have played it on stream a couple of times and betting huge oh, wow. amounts. <laughs> wow, and I'm about. I think I'm about their level. Maybe, hopefully, a little bit better. Maybe, uh, uh, but uh, that's you always say that that you're I, you're a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I think I I Did you I, play I, tennis. I, I, I no, but I I I I'm pretty. I like racquetball. Uh, I play I play a bit of stuff. I I like. I got a feeling you're better than me because I'm, I'm relatively new. I haven't done a ton of work on it, but it's fun. It's a great game, great exercise, and two on yeah. two. I, I like two on two more um yeah. for for that but yeah that's that's very cool is it very it's popular in your in your region it's uh it was it was one of the things that was open to play during the corona so it, it totally exploded in sweden actually uh this uh, during the pandemic so it's really popular now it's cooling down a little bit but they built so many core uh courts and so it's um uh, yeah i think sweden and, and also like finland is, and norway it's it's really exploding and and it's a lot of fun to play, but uh, yeah. And I, 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 I like racket sports overall. I, I'm, yeah, I play a sport called racketlon. I competed in that one for a while. It's a really small sport, but um, uh, that's playing. You play table tennis, badminton, squash, and tennis. It's like triathlon, but for rackets. Wow, <laughs> jeez, that's in, that sounds yeah. Lexan, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you're ahead, but it, it is a fun, fun game. If you, if you're coming to Vegas, will you be able to come you, this summer at all? Or I'm sorry, this this fall. I'm, th yeah, we're thinking about, it, but uh, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know about the rules right now to come into to to the states. So uh, that's been the problem. Um, we. It, we were planning to go the whole crew from the gambling cabin last summer, but then the pandemic came, so we couldn't go. Uh, and then we planned to go this this fall, but uh, since we didn't really know, so we haven't planned it. But I really want, I really, really wanted to go and play some uh, play some poker live, and especially the PLO tournaments in WSOP. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully you do. Maybe we play some racquetball, some paddle. I know pickleball yeah. is the fastest growing sport in America. I like that a lot, but I uh, yeah. paddle's been the new one that I've been playing. And right by my house, there's uh, courts there in, in Florida, and it's getting very popular. So, yeah, that's very cool. But uh, as much as we want to know about your paddle tennis <laughs> tour and, and your, your how you might be uh, comparing to everyone, I, th I think what everyone wants to know is your guard is one of the best PLO players in the world. I see a lot of people from the gambling cabin joining. Uh, hello to everyone. Thank you guys for being here. Um, and you guys have a very successful Twitch, as we can see the gambling cabin. So Northern European, one of the most popular gambling streams. I know you guys do mostly in Swedish. You're saying you may go into some American content, some English uh, in the future, which is very cool. But first of all, um, tell me who are who is who is this crew here? This uh, the the guys. Why don't you give me a little introduction on the on, and go through who these guys are and what you guys do at the gambling yeah. cabin? Yeah. We are a community that uh, that does um, poker and sports betting, betting uh, mainly. We do some fantasy sports uh, and stuff as well. But it's a community about like, community about gambling, and uh, uh, we consists of from the start. We were a couple of like um, uh, past and and present uh, poker pros that started this. So we wanted to do something that was a little bit different from from other uh, communities, uh, okay. a really serious. We, we, we try to mix some entertainment with uh, a lot of good value for everybody that watches and try to have fun with, with poker and sports betting and, uh, and but do, do good things and try to win money. <laughs> Very nice. And, so, and yeah. who, who are these, uh, run through quickly on this, who are the guys here from left to right? Jerry. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, Jerry Adian. That's uh, uh, Perry Mason. He's a high six uh, poker pro. And then we have Sira, who is also like a poker player, a little bit uh, smaller stakes. And uh, also uh, Dubon. He's a uh, he's a legend in Sweden. He's a big poker uh, personality and, and really good at uh, pool betting and stuff like that. That's me. Tim Mann is also. Uh, he plays pretty high poker as well, and Giganten, he's just a legend. He played uh, really high back in the days, and he's still uh, the most entertaining personality you could find uh, in, in, uh, in 
poker or sports betting or anywhere i, I would say <laughs> that's awesome so, and yeah. and what about the two gentlemen up top there they, they kind of commentate announce friends or oh yeah yeah they, they they do the the trotting trotting is really big in sweden um and uh it's david and patrick and uh, david is really good at sports betting as well but uh they are super good at, at trotting so uh uh, that's also like we we have a lot of different areas of the gambling cabin and trotting is a big part of it as well very cool and uh, <laughs> i said someone said in the chat they're telling you you need a new nickname what's your what do you have a nickname do you need an upgraded nickname what's your what is your yeah, I, I don't really have a, a good uh, it's it's bengan that's uh, that's the nickname it's uh it isn't really it's nothing that's uh really sexy maybe so we need we need something new all right, I'm, I've been. I, I like making nicknames, so we can work on that. I actually, I got to ask you, what happened on the, the? You win the WPT first of all. Congratulations, twenty one hundred. Nice. Very tough field, you know. It's a, it's a high buy-in online WPT. Sure. It's prestigious. I believe a trophy comes with it. I don't know if you've got in the mail yet. Uh, and and Mr. Kilbane, Henry Kilbane, who was uh, talking, said something. Fifteen left. If you win, he would sing the the gambling cabin anthem but I, I we come to find there wasn't actually an anthem for your your team is that or for your your, your group is that true are you making one you're gonna have them sing it or or what's the deal with that we need we need we needed to sing it actually we we did the one of the guys that was uh Syra, that was in the uh in the picture that he made a song for and we all sang in it for the european championships in in uh in football right here uh yeah so that, yeah. He, he made a song he made, makes some music as well so uh we have one song and maybe he needs to sing that one but the the the, the song that was taken up in the on the stream that was a made up song it was about uh, i think two two sit down like that like, that that was the song that's but uh that's something we do like we make people sit down in the cabin then that's uh, that's what he was uh, referring to that uh when you when you bluff someone or you catch a bluff or you win a big pot, then 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 you make someone sit down, and that's something we we uh, yeah we love have fun with. I, hope, I want to see Henry sing. You know, he put it out there. He gave a free roll, and he should be. Yeah. I don't want to say punished, but yeah, he should have to perform and and, and absolutely you guys praises. So that would be uh, that'd be very cool. Well, and how did this come to light? Where did this come from exactly? The gambling cabin, very cool name. Love the logo. I see this a lot. You know, it's a it, I, the Scandinavian countries are very PLO. People just like they, they get so much respect and deserve for their game. And Pila, why do you believe that your group and just in general the the Scandinavian countries are so strong and renowned in PLO? What what is the reason and, and why is it so popular there? Yeah, I got the question in an interview uh, for Party Poker Blog actually, and I answered them that uh, um, if you try to be the best one, the best player in your own backyard, and your backyard consists of world class players then you will become pretty pretty good yourself. So I think it's like uh, when all sports, they thrive a competition. And um, if, you, if you train with really good people in sports and if you compete with really good people in, in paddle tennis or whatever you do, you're going you're gonna to get so much better quickly. So I think that's, that's, that, that's the thing that uh, these bulks of countries or or communities gets really good in both like Texas and or, or different sports, different parts of poker. Um, and uh, I think that's 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 the reason, I guess. I mean, a lot of Finns are really good in PLO as well. I think the best players are Swedish or, or Finnish players in the world. Uh, I mean, there are some really, really good American ones as well, of course. That's, um, I, I saw I saw in my stream yesterday, someone came in and, and they put this quote and I hope this is true because it's a very cool Lex Veldhaus. He said something once that, you know, most people, if they want money, they, they go to a bank and if <laughs> bank wants money, he just enters a PLO tournament. Have you heard that quote before? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he, 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 I think he tweeted that. That was pretty fun. I mean, I've been running really, really good in these PLO tournaments and uh, it's, uh, it's basically almost a joke. I think I play, I play them good. I really do, but I also been running really good. So that's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, especially when there are so many good players it's uh it's it's fun to make them t sit down a little bit <laughs> sometimes they gotta take a seat i mean that's sometimes exactly. you gotta make someone just step out so uh yeah. what what is what is your superpower and and what are you guys doing don't give all the secrets i'm sure you guys are, you know solvers and there's a lot of work nowadays people are doing on their game and and studying but you know what what is it what is your attribute that 
that sort of you think separates you or why you might be regarded as the best or one of the best in the world? What are some things you think that you just inherently do do well that others maybe uh, first struggle First of with? all, I really like the hype that I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the be- one of the best in the world. That's what I always say on my, on I'm my hype man, man. I'm gonna, Whatever it is, I'm going to blow it out. I'm going to make it better. Exactly. I mean, I've heard it. I'm, I'm going to embrace it. Since you say it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna contest it. But uh, 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 if you're if you if, if I'm gonna be, gonna be truthful, uh, I don't play that much anymore uh, as I used to. I re- I was I was very good um, back in the days. Uh, my uh, my glory days was maybe ten ten years ago. And uh, then I played the highest stakes cash games online. I played a lot of heads up. Um, and nowadays I play mostly for fun. Even though uh, I try to win when I play, of course, and uh, I've been doing really well. But we do a lot of sports betting and other things. Um, uh, so, so my PLO game, I think it's. Uh, I like that you say it's one of the best in the world, but uh, I, yeah, we, well, we'll keep uh, it there. I think. <laughs> all right, that's a good place to keep it. Let me let me ask though, when you are when you when you are playing, this is always the most interesting question to me to, to top players is how many tables do you play? So in PLO, it's a lot of six-handed, seven-handed tournaments. You know, it's yeah. online, but there it's it's actually you know it's different than a six-handed uh, no limit. It's it's a little it's not quite as rapid. But what's your comfort in tables? Like you just won a WPT. 2100 you know, $71,000. I was actually doing commentary with Henry Cobain, James Dempsey. Uh, we had some fun, some some familiar faces here in the chat that were there, and and you take it down, right? But were you were you six tabling, 12 tabling to start the day, one tabling, two table? How do you, when you approach these events, what are you usually doing? Um, table? Well, um, I, I back in the days, I was playing a lot more tables, of course. I was grinding cash games, maybe four to six tables. And uh, but when you play heads up, uh, which was my best game, a couple of tables maybe. Uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, when I play tournaments, I do play worse when I get up to six tables or something like that. So I try to play maybe, maybe four tables and play the most interesting tournaments. I mean, uh, I'm really impressed with a with a new uh, generation that can play so many tournaments and still play that kind of level that they do. I don't. I can't hold the same level if I play a lot of tables. That's that's just. I I just yeah. can't do it. So uh, I try to play it's, maybe four. It, and how often are you streaming when you play? Because I know you guys have. There's a lot of guys in your crew. So is, is your channel live? You know, what would you say the the breakdown is, and how do you guys decide? If like a few guys want to play, do you just kind of toss it over to who has a deeper run? Or I see. I know multiple times I've watched where you guys have like two, three on at the same time or talking. So how do you guys kind of decide? And and uh, and how often do you stream? Yeah, actually, uh, we do both, uh, as I said, like poker and sports betting contacts. So we stream almost every day. Um, but uh, uh, recently, there's been a lot of sports betting content at, as well. Uh, and then we do some home games and um, tor- uh, tournaments like that for poker. But during this series, we try to stream some. And tonight, we're going to stream uh, Jerry, Jerry Pedemesen. is uh, on the final table in the 2K. So that's going to be a lot of fun to stream. We're going to rail it, and we're going to stream it, and we're going to commentate it. Um, oh wow! Cool. Yeah, I saw Lex um, there too, I believe as well. So yeah, be, yeah, with uh, Lex, ex- exactly. Be, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Very, that's gonna be a very big yeah. stream. Um, uh, so <laughs> we we do like um, put in this uh, kind of tournament uh, grind streams as well a lot, but it's it's a lot of mix with sports betting and and some trotting as well. Uh, but we're actually gonna start streaming. Uh, we I'm I'm breaking the news that we're gonna start uh, an English channel. Um, and uh, stream a lot more poker. So we're gonna stream poker almost every day, uh, and it's gonna be a, uh, well, it's gonna be a lot of fun with that one. Well, I, I really, you know, love, I, 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 I do more sports betting than poker nowadays. But I love poker. I like to play poker a lot more than the sports betting. I think it's uh, when you do when you get into it. I think it's so competitive and it's so much fun and it's just uh, a brilliant game to to play. So and also stream it. Yeah, I think it's so much fun. For sure. And you, uh, w- would you say, I mean, you, you used to, when did you actually change from, from no limit to PLO and what was that, what happened for that to happen? Cause I know you were a top, top player. You were, you said you were in 10 years ago. I see you have over a million dollars. Take a look. We go down memory lane here. Now, as <laughs> I see on almost every guest I've ever had that uh, plays yeah. poker on my show, they always final table their first 
event. I don't know. Like it's like 97%. So sure enough, the first recorded cash, you get a final table, you take third place. Um, you know, what, ha- what was going on here back uh, for you to hop in a tournament? And I guess, where's this France you played in, 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 in France at 2,500. Had you been already yeah. playing poker or was this like, you just decided to go here for a series or you were in town and it was going, what, what made you play a tournament then? Yeah. Uh, I basically I started playing poker in maybe 2002. I was studying to become an engineer. And uh, then I, I mean, I, I thought it was a brilliant game, as I said. And, and then uh, I started winning. I was uh, I read some poker books and started winning, playing No Limit. And they started playing some limit poker and moving up, moving up in stakes. And then I met some other guys and, and uh, played some local tournaments, as, as we all do. And then we started like traveling to a, for a couple of years and, and playing the, the tour or, and playing these li- a little bit higher stakes tournaments as well. But I've always been a cash game player during my career. It's, it's now after my career a little bit that I started playing more tournaments. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, you I don't have know. A, you, have a, you have a child, eight, you said eight-year-old? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I played... I mean, for for about ten years, I played uh, as a real pro, I, I would say, and uh, I played really. I mean, I mean, as I said, I played Texas and I played high stakes uh, up to I mean, 100, 200, 200 400 Texas. Um, but um, in the last year, uh, I mean, it went a little bit uh, worse. We, uh, I got uh, what's I got uh, my for first and only uh, child. So and then I decided to um take a break from poker and uh started doing sports betting because i'm doing the sports betting and poker for a couple of years then and uh poker is pretty tough when i know you you have a kid as well yeah and uh i mean it's it it is kind of tough to have all these hours playing playing around the hours and uh, just also the the swings in poker and uh, the kind of lifestyle you have i think i thought it was a little bit easier with sports betting but it's still it's still a little bit tough it is pretty, pretty tough but um... you know, to, to be fair like i i actually so when i found twitch in around 2015 you know i, yeah. I didn't have kids or i had actually just gotten serious in a relationship now that is my now wife um but you know the the online it's kind of fun right because like if you want to play tournaments and be online excuse me, and then play, play some of these stuff. You don't have to travel, right? Or, or, or you can be more, it's, it's more realistic, like to actually be on the tour, to go around world poker tour stops and WSOP yeah. and, you know, everywhere. And it's, be have a family, it's really hard, but to be able to like yeah. flick on stream for a bit, go in and out, be flexible Absolutely. that it's, it's really convenient. I think it's more, more realistic mm-hmm. uh, to have yeah. a child or a family. So that's cool. And also I just want to ask you before we, we go along, uh, Henry Kilbane, I got a the guy loves PLO. He's passionate. He was mentioning, he thought his theory on why that Sweden and, and Finland and Denmark and these, these kind of Finnish countries are so strong. They really embrace people. If they see that someone has talent from the beginning, they kind of take them under their wing, as you're mentioning the backyard kind of mentality yeah. where yeah. you hang out and you embrace each other and, and get better. I mean, I'm not, I am not, uh, I don't have any, I did my 23 and me test. I'm not from any Scandinavian countries, but I am looking for a PLO home. I've been exploring, talking to a few people. I, I would like to, you know, put it out there that if you are doing adoptions or any type of, uh, <laughs> you know, program, you said you're going to start doing English stuff. I, I would love to be involved. That would be great. More, yeah. So, you yeah. Know, put it out there on the spot, but you know, don't you, not, you don't have a home with the gambling cabin for sure. Yeah, I love that. I'm sure I got some work. I'm sure you guys could probably program me into a, a real crusher. Like you said, we were talking a little before. And there's some stuff you've, we've played, and I think, you know, obviously everyone can get better. Uh, I, I definitely – I'm more content these days. I'm, I'm a little bit – I need to I need to brush up on my my game. And I want to play some these, – yeah. these uh, WSOPs, like 25, 50K PLO. Like, they get crazy fields. You've seen these. Yeah. I don't know if you were there last year. The 10Ks, the 25Ks, they get huge fields, huge purses. And the action seems very good. So, um, yeah, I'd love to brush up a bit and and uh, and, and and check yeah, in. That's on what, what I wanted to go to Vegas. I, I also saw some kind of some uh, some streams and some hand reviews or hand histories from from the PLO events. And then I really wanted to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I yeah, think it's people a, clicking yeah. buttons for sure. Like it's like I, you know everyone makes mistakes or plays a little spewy, yeah. but there's really some like you know there's some value and those those are deep deep structured good tournaments and uh it's uh it's really cool so i yeah i hope hope you get to make it over there 
in, in a way I don't, right? Because uh, it'd be a little softer fields. But if you guys make it over, and I'm sure, you know, it's going to be a big, big time in October in the, the World Series. Should be a lot of fun and, and be a lot of action there. Um, what what would be your critique of uh, of PLO tournaments, though? Because, like, I've, I've seen some they explore with the Annie's. Parliament Omaha generally doesn't have um, Annie's. What do you think? Is that, What's your dream based on what you know? Uh, not yeah. Don't take you personally, but just, like, looking at the overall – climate the health of plo at the moment and it's very popular what would be your your suggestion what's a perfect plo tournament structure wise uh annies no annies um how, how would you like to see it and what do you think would be the best for the overall health of the game for tournaments it's really i mean it's really hard to know exactly what's best for the overall health but i think that these tournaments with with anti on party poker has been really good i think that's the best way to go i think i think it's a little bit um uh, too much with both anti and uh, when it's a bounty tournament. I think that makes up maybe a little bit uh, too much of a loose game uh, and makes a little bit of the, I mean, skill or whatever you say go away. But it, it's really it can be really crazy if you play that if you try to play per perfect uh, in these uh, bounty plus anti tournaments. But uh, I mean, below bounty is, is, is a lot of fun to play, of course, but. Uh, um, I think I think I think the introduction f uh, of party poker for an anti game is is uh, is the best way to go, and I think also these two day tournaments that's been playing the WPT, the Poker Masters uh, that was uh, last year. Uh, I love those, but then it's I mean PLO has been a little bit hard to get the fields um, fields going. Uh, well, of course really you love good. it. Look at look at these results on this first first. You just just rip off two hundred k in a couple of days. I mean, yeah. So we yeah. know you like it, but well, yeah, you think it's the but that that so that is. I mean, it seems like it's growing again because I kind of for a while thought PLO would take over. Like it looked like it was like in a shift to where you go to a casino and it was more PLO. It kind of like leveled off. I, I mean, I guess in, in Europe, it's probably still the most popular and in casinos, I would guess. But just overall, it seems like it didn't quite get there, but it does kind of have a resurgence. And then there's short deck, the Triton events. Um, you know, it does seem healthy. I'd say the overall health of PLO seems like it's pretty popular right now. And you're seeing some good turnouts in the... Uh, the online events as well. I mean, is that is that fair to say? Would you say like in the last three to five years, it's sort of in a very strong state right now? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's the ups and downs all the time. But uh, I think uh, PLO, and there is also came some PLO five card games that's been playing a lot on, in in the casinos and uh, the like casinos, and that's also like it's a completely different game, but it's a lot of fun, and it's also like the the cards run out so closely, so it's. Uh, can we be uh, uh, a lot of swings and a lot of fun to play live? Yeah. Um, tell me, tell me a bit about five card and six card, even because I, I first I was like, man, I've, I played a, yeah. a very little, very little five card, very little six card, but I played like six card high low on a on an app, <laughs> and that was like that was some crazy stuff. And in a way, there probably is a lot of like you say, oh, it's so lucky and whatever, but really, it might even be more skill. Like, where do you where do you rank those games in terms of skill and ability? Because you know, it's even more important probably with starting hands and and spots yeah. because equities and it gets so crazy. Well, give me a little bit of your thoughts on five and six card PLO. Yeah, I don't know six card. I ha I've never played six card actually. I think uh, that that might be too crazy. But five card is really really popular and um, um, it is. I talked a little bit about a friend of mine that's really really good at that, and he says he, he thinks it's a completely different game and you have to adjust accordingly. Um, so. Uh, I've been like dipping my feet a little bit into five card and been playing it live mostly, but um, um, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't think I'm very good at it yet. But I think it's right. a, it's a game that it's been enjoyed, and a lot of like the more recreational players they like to play that more than four cards because uh, when the cards run out uh, closer, uh, the equities are closer. It's uh, it's that's that's why why people wanted to play PLO from the start <laughs> compared to Texas because uh, yeah, the, you can have much more fun and play uh, other kind of cards. You can play more, more flops and uh, uh, you can also get lucky uh, a little bit for a bit longer maybe than you can in, in Texas or uh, even, even in four card PLO. So I think How that's, that's probably the future in, in a lot of live games to play the five card PLO. Yeah, I, you know, I hear I hear this argument that solvers and this and that, like, listen, it's always like, it's like, you know, 
yeah. good good cop bad cop there's always stuff happening in, in in every field right where people there's hackers and then it's like yeah. finding a way to to kind of combat that but in poker i think they say one of the biggest risks are solvers the games can solve but i think that's like there's all people love gambling right the gambling cabin we understand this this is because yeah. people like to gamble and have fun where there's skill and luck and that's kind of like with chess and and backgammon and these games got solved uh and it's sort of like you know it can dry up and and just not like someone's better they're just better generally yeah. but in poker i think that's a cool part right there's always iterations five cards six cards high lows you know you, you add this take away that short deck like there's always ways to kind of um change, change the game, game a little bit and, yeah. and, and introduce new things yeah absolutely i mean i mean as you mentioned chess is i mean that's moving up a lot also a lot of people having fun with that online and and uh, uh so i don't think that that i don't think that poker will dry out uh in the sense that people are going to start to stop stop playing online but uh, it's going to change for sure in some ways but i don't think it needs to be in the uh, ah, in a bad way i mean um, right but uh, yeah. what, what what has happened maybe that is that i mean 10 years ago uh, the money was bigger and um in the in the normal games not now you have a lot of private games maybe and you have a lot of like games you have to do stuff to get into and the money is really big but um Back in the days, you could you can just jump into a game that was really high and can, and uh, there was there was a lot of value um, in right. different kind of games. So yeah, I mean, and the same thing with chess, or exactly that. Like, there's a combination of chess and poker called choker, which is interesting the idea and how they're they're playing with that. But then there's also the bullet chess, right? It's like yeah, the best yeah. players like it's boring, you know, sit there, you take I, I like how I play, I'm slow, I just I don't play much, but it's it take forever. But when you do the the you introduce the bullet or the speed stuff, it gets fun, right? Because it's like the variance is there. It's like you're fast, am I? And yeah, I think that's the that's the key. I think these games will always succeed and thrive and, and get better, and and people people like yeah. to gamble. Uh, so yeah, what is, uh, tell me a little about the content you're, are you, what is your official title? You're the head of content at the gambling cabin. What is your official role? I see you stay, you kind of, you kind of <laughs> perched up here in the middle, a little bit popped out. Like where are you the CEO? They, they, they call role? me Kim Jung Il of the gambling cabin. That's the, okay. the dictator of gambling cabin. <laughs> wow. Nice. All right. Well, that's all right. It's good to be a leader. No, um, we, yeah, no, but, um, uh, we, now we do a lot of things together and, and, um, um, as I said, it's uh, we do we do two different pod, three different podcasts: one poker, one about sports betting, pool betting, and one about trotting. Uh, and uh, then we stream almost every day. So lo right now, as I said, everything is in Swedish. So if you are Swedish, you should you should come join the, the, the Twitch channel or uh, listen to the podcast. But we are starting up uh, in English, and we're probably going to do some poker uh, st uh, stuff pretty pretty soon in in English. So. It's gonna be fun. And could you explain a little more about uh, tr trotting? I haven't actually heard that term before. Uh, the what? Trotting. 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 Okay. They, yeah, trotting. That, that's like horse horse racing. That's uh, horse racing, but but with a wagon behind. That uh, that's really big in Sweden. It's not. It's not like the the, the standard kind of uh, where you see in uh, when you ride up on the, uh, on the horse, but it is like uh, with a yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it uh, in, a, in another way. Um, okay, uh, interesting. It, yeah, it's, it's, another... it's big in France, and and, and it's uh, it's pretty big in states as well. I think in in some in some places. Um, what what's the biggest race called? Like the, the Derby? or something like that. Hum the, Humber the pre are you talking about the, the 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 Derby, like the Kentucky Derby in the U.S. Those type of races, or no? Yeah, or but that's uh, Kentucky Derby. Is uh, that's when you ride up on the horse. This is like when you have the uh, Hamiltonian is the biggest one. Yeah, I think Prix okay. Prix de Marik is the biggest race in the world. That's in France. And then we have the Elite Loppet, where you drink for three days and you watch watch the trotting. That's what we do in May. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, cool. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna it's it. really big. I mean, the, the pool betting for for this for trotting is like uh, it's huge. It's huge. So uh, yeah. Explain this logo because I've seen this. Uh, I've, I've, it's interesting. I see this on a lot of. I remember back when I was playing a lot on Poker Stars. This was very yeah. popular logo, and I see it a fair amount still. So is this your guys? This is this means when you see this, this means that people are supporting or represents that, or is that is that this exactly is your like that? Yeah. And, and what yeah, is you're supporting or representing? That? No, we, when we when we started, I, I I started myself like streaming just for fun, uh, basically. And um, the idea was to bring, you know, you know, if you have a couple of friends over and you 
and you, uh, you you gamble with your friends. You you play some two poker tournaments. Maybe you watch a basketball game. Maybe you watch some NFL, and you and you bet on those. And then you then you then you go and play like blackjack or whatever. You just have like a, a, a uh, what we call it a spiel stuga in Swedish. That's like direct translation of gambling cabin. That's when you when you meet and you gamble with your friends. And we wa I wanted to bring that to to Twitch. Uh, that everybody could come into my living room here and just join and and have fun and and see what I'm doing and see and and do betting and gambling themselves. So that's how we started. And then my friend he made some logos and that that was uh, what it came up with. Uh, that, that's a poker ship with a with a house on. That's uh, the gambling cabin in those co colors. And it came from there. So very cool. And yeah. do you enjoy more the actual playing of a, let's call it a PLL tournament, like you know, take the two K WPT championship, or do you like kind of the content side of it and, and creating and organizing and get on Twitch and, and doing all that? Like, what, what's more fun for you, playing or, or sort of the business side and, and being involved in all other other aspects? I, I, I really like to love to stream, but I love to stream playing poker. I think it's. Uh, I mean. Um, I don't know when I when I start playing poker a lot, I you get so into it, I almost can't stop. I think it's <laughs> I think it's so much fun. So I mean, that's always been my favorite thing to do. Like uh, for gambling, it's playing poker. So uh, I don't think that uh, much can beat that. But um, to have like a balance in life, I think um, um, you have to work out. You have to work during days. We have I do content for fun, and then we play poker, and then we do the other things. I, I try to have a balance with everything. Uh, but uh, lately, I haven't play, been playing a lot of poker. But I really want to start playing more because I do think that's the most fun of all the gambling uh, part. For sure. So. And, and can you tell me a little bit about Sweden? Because it's uh, I know I've had on um, we I've had on some some Swedish guests, and I understand the laws change, right? Like it's like there's a deposit yeah. limit. They were outlawing. Like, can you give me the current state of yeah. affairs? What is the what is it happening in Sweden for you to play online, or what what limit wise and this and that? How how is it working there? Yeah, actually, like when when uh, the pandemic started, I played a lot of poker online. First of all, because there was no other sports, so then then we play poker, uh, and we streamed it a lot, and and that's where you have all the results from when I played the tournament. It went went really good, um, but then they came up with the law in Sweden that um, they made uh, a limit for the deposits for five hundred uh, dollars a week. So uh, and that's been almost uh, for over a year now. It's going to be uh, until November at least, uh, and that uh, after that, uh, it was pretty hard to play online if you hadn't like a, if you didn't keep a big big bankroll on each poker site. And what, what about player transfers? Because that was kind of eliminated too with Sweden. Yeah, that, but that was even eliminated before, and and also the rakeback was uh, eliminated before when uh, oh. when they started doing. So the problem is that they they are. Poker is in the same, uh, what do you call it? It's as casino. It's the same. It's it's uh, labeled the same as casino in Sweden. So that's that's good and bad because it's good because you don't have to pay taxes on winnings at all. So that's really good. And before uh, they um, made this all these restrictions, everything was good with it because you didn't have to pay ta pay taxes. You can do budget transfers. And uh, you had uh, the rake back. Now they took away the rake back. They took away the budget transfers, and then eventually they also had a limit of five hundred dollars a week. So we actually sent in like a complaint or what do you call it, like for petition. Uh, yeah. a petition, exactly, uh, to the to the government for and trying to separate uh, also poker from 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 casino and also like trying to explain. But I mean. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's it is it is very crazy the world right like different places regions tax it like the laws yeah. and the outlooks and all that it, it's uh, it's unfortunate yeah. but it's an uphill battle in the U.S. I know Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, some other states have come online and it's looking more promising. Sports betting also legalized at a federal yeah. level in the U.S. So you know some some stuff's kind of moving moving forward. I think ultimately people governments understand people are going to do it one way or the other. They're going to use VPNs. They're going to they're going to yeah. use bookies. They're going to do stuff. They're going to they're going to find a way. Might as well sure. tax it regulated and and make it less uh, taboo so uh very interesting though and in, in, yeah, a lot uh, of swedish companies are uh, trying to get into the u.s sports betting market actually because yeah. we we have we, we are really um it came a long way because we had like the we've been gambling online for 
for 20 years for sports betting. So uh, they have all these uh, solutions and, and backend solutions and stuff like that. So they're trying to implement that in the US as well. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing for the, these kind of companies actually as well. The, for sure, for the sure. regulation. And, and how do you balance or how do you kind of um, disclaimers and, and, and be, you know, the, the thought of, uh, like being addicted and gambling, like you said, it's yep. like for, it's so fun, and it's 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 of course like I, exactly, you know, yeah. what, what's your thoughts and how do you guys kind of just say be careful and have fun and not not overstep your uh, your means? Exactly. When when I started this, when we started this, um, the the base of everything was responsible gaming. That's what where we, where I started. I wanted to do something that was the most responsible way you can do gambling. I mean, it's hard because gambling could be it it, it could be a, a lot of problem for for people. Uh, so we try to do everything um, with the base of, uh, of responsibility in gambling and talk about that a lot and uh, and also like try yeah try to try to just highlight stuff and um, uh, not uh, ourselves try to gamble in a, in a responsible way ourselves also and not talk about doing doing things that you shouldn't do so i mean it, it is really hard but I, I i try to i mean i compare it a little bit with with alcohol that uh, you can sell if, if you if you promote gambling you you can you can sell like your own homemade disgusting liquor that's 80 percent that's going to make people alcoholic or you can you can just provide them with with some good good uh, red wine and and uh, and in, in a decent way and try them to drink responsible and i think it's a, a little bit the same thing um that yeah. we all should all should take responsibility that work in doing content through gambling that we all should should have res responsibility about that um and uh yeah, i think i think ultimately people have addictive personalities too or not right like people find things and they overdo it or, or yeah, they're very we, responsible and you can gamble any stakes right you can play for free rolls you can do sure. you can play for the lowest stakes or whatever so I, I think it's a little bit of a miss sort of conception and unfortunately people kind of kind of bring in poker with with casino games and gambling when there's a big difference too there it's, it's um, a huge difference of course but yeah. as long as you take your your responsibility i think and just um i don't think it's i don't think i think you're doing, doing probably a good thing so i mean right for sure um and, and, and try and try to also like uh, um teach people about this so if you do if you go to other channels or if you go to casino channels then you, then you might then you might be in being being be in, in um uh, in trouble uh, for some people like but uh, if you go to our channel they should have a um safe a safer environment for that i don't know if, how how better to explain it yeah no it makes makes perfect sense um and and what is uh what looking up here anything super exciting uh schedule wise you know we talked about wsop if you're able to get over there in the world's a crazy time of course anything that you're looking eyeing up on on across the board i know party poker again you took down the wpt one yeah. the, the, which is cool actually i'm, I'm bummed because i want I, I had that highlighted <laughs> but i was in a place i couldn't play i did want to play that event got to commentate that was a treat very uh very big rail you had and and fun to close that one out in a, in a tough yeah uh, field you, there. Could have, you could have gambled for a second place it would be it would have been fun yes i would have <laughs> that time for that any any time um but yeah so uh I, uh, yeah, is there any other ones? Is there any other stuff that really is exciting coming up that you have? It could be on any site. Don't worry. This is WPT centric party, but tell me what's, what's good online coming up that you love. Sure. I mean, I mean, right now it's, it, there are some series going on, on poker stars and I mean, also on, on party and, um, I don't know exactly what's coming up on other sites, but, uh, there are some bigger pillow tournaments. I'm focusing on those ones. And then I play maybe some Texas on the side, but a little bit lower stakes normally, uh, uh, I have been playing, trying to play a little bit higher stakes of those one too. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I think I think my my edge and my game is PLO tournaments. So uh, I'm 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 eyeing those ones that uh, whenever whenever the bigger tournaments in PLO comes up, I I uh, I try to to put them on my schedule. So yeah, yeah, and so like the 5300 five mil, will you play that? Maybe or do you play some? Will you play some of these big or the five k on WSOP twenty mil going on right now? Is there are any of these? Do you play? Uh, hold them tournaments or not really uh you mean uh, uh wsop yeah so like uh, or the 5k wpt like any of these like big yeah, and the, massive guarantees do you yeah, happen we, it's sweets can't play on on gg or, uh, or the other sites that haven't uh that don't have a license in in sweden uh, or we oh, wow. might be able to play it but there, there are no re real you 
it's really hard to get into those sites. We you have to have a Swedish license uh, nowadays, mm. and GG doesn't have a Swedish license. They have a Maltese license, so okay. it's it's kind of like a, in a gray zone. So it's uh, it's I don't know, uh, right. but I don't play on GG. So uh, I, I know there are a lot of fun tournaments there as well, but I, I don't play there. Um, right. But uh, as I said, yeah, Poker Stores has 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 a, a, some few PLO events, and then of course, um, yeah, the WPT was 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 great. I mean, as as I also said in the previous interview, I think that like, like it was it was really big to have one of these titles. It, it's an online title, of course, but it's still a it's still a real WPT title. Yeah. And uh, when you get to my age, you you <laughs> and you've gambled for twenty years, it's. Uh, the money is fun, but I mean the titles is is uh, is really exciting to to have and have something to remember. How and, old are you? Uh, I'm uh, forty. Forty, nice. Okay, I'm thirty five yeah. next this Sunday. So yeah, good, good. We're getting older, man. It is true. <laughs> it gets it gets going, right? The the trophy. Yeah. You know, I actually, I Patrick Leonard was talking about the trophies, and this is how I feel as well because you know it's cool. Yeah. You, it's so rare to win a live event or you know major event, but online they're, they're now, especially with COVID, sort of expediting all this and, and and more of this happening and realizing that you know there are huge events and it's still prestigious and actually maybe tougher to win online events than than live. Uh, I, sure. I think they should have trophies for more events because it is cool man okay. like i would love you know you should you have it behind you you have your trophy set who cares that yeah. for the sites it doesn't cost you money on full tilt they used to send you yeah. every time you knocked out a pro a t-shirt instead of giving yeah. you know twelve dollars a t-shirt times a, a zillion or whatever like these sites could just they have nice trophies anytime you win you know whatever 10k or more 20k or more first prize you know they send you a, a trophy right and they have different tiers and you have a it would be sick to have a, a shelf yeah. of trophies it, and you remember the poker and, masters last year on, on party poker yeah they have the the jacket yeah uh, i think it was a purple jacket uh yep. for, I, I played the plo events and i i was in the top in the plo uh, race but uh, i didn't play the 25 case i thought that was a little bit pricey but then i then i was in the in the top and i tried a little bit and i played one 25k i qualified for that one but then i came i think fourth in the race but i really wanted that jacket <laughs> i mean as yeah. long as i yeah so I think yeah, that no. was a great thing just just a, an ugly purple jacket but that was huge i mean <laughs> yeah no it's it's exactly it's fun right it's, it's people love yeah. rankings they love you know like the hand and mob the site to see where you rank in the country in your city you know these type of sure. things is good for the game and i think it it, it promotes it i gotta ask Bragging you about right yes yes it's in, it's important <laughs> um what tell me about your community the gaming cabin because i see honestly for this was short notice um you know I, you've been in the in the game for so long you guys seem to have such a loyal strong group of people i already see here a lot of a lot of people engaging people coming in having a good yeah. time sees very positive energy like i rarely yeah. see toxicity on you know anyone na nasty or having to time out people everyone just seems friendly yeah. fun i open, think that's, I think that's how, the thing how, i'm how most that? proud of i'm the most proud of that thing that i think that's so much much good people and so much positivity and everybody's uh uh, we're having a lot of fun teasing each other and uh, and and just uh, but it's it's a lot of like um, positive energy a lot of love between each other and um, and that's i think that's the most the thing with the gambling cabin that's that i'm uh, most proud of that we built this community that's uh, so much um, that brings so much to people i think a lot of people uh, appreciate it especially during the pandemic now you can be at home you can watch us you can you can get some uh hopefully get some value from it and but also a lot of pos positivity and entertainment and fun yeah. things yeah um so I, yeah it's it's amazing you know and i actually i had, a, I had a good friend of mine say something to me at around march or april of last year which uh, kind of bothered me but i guess it's like one of those things that there's always different perspectives and views but so one of my one of my good friends was like you know this was around let's call it April. Like the, the world was in disarray, right? Like stuff's closing down. People are freaking out, not really sure what's happening. And I, I was, you know, doing streams, a lot of content, right. And like promoting poker and things. And, and my thought was like, yeah, so, okay. Sports are down, right? No sports yeah. content. People are at home. People are kind of like maybe a little scared or upset or don't know what's going on. Like in a way it's kind of like you're providing, I feel providing value or entertainment to people. There's something sure. to watch, something to engage with, something to sweat, be a part of. They you know, so like everyone was like, Oh, how, you know, you shouldn't be posting about 
gambling or winning, you know, I had a big score and like this, and it's just like, I don't, I just don't agree with that because like, I think that it is. And that's totally that wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, what are we supposed to do? So we should return yeah. no sports that all just watch the news and look at these, these numbers and get freaked out. Or do you want to, I mean, people, people doing- will always gamble. They will always gamble. And, and you are doing a positive yeah. thing, of course. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, poker is also, it's not even close to the same as other other gambling things right. that you can you can you can also there's a lot of content of so i mean that's that's just wrong yeah, yeah i exi- no but i mean listen of course like democrat republican vax yeah. pro vax anti vax there's always opinions and stuff but i just think it's uh, <laughs> sure. it's in, it's interesting you know and and in general i think it is very valuable and like for me what i found i love so much and it seems like same with you you kind of you did create this community this this brand and it's fun to kind of build something because you know playing poker is great, but you know it's sort yeah. of like you know if you're playing video games. I remember back in the day I used to play a lot as well, and there was a, there was a very famous, well, very very commercial that stood out for me it was Sprite. It was like where you could twist the cap and win something, right? You you under the cap and you win a prize, a jersey, a trip, and then like there was a commercial. And these kids were playing and celebrating. One guy won, and the and the the the, 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 the little cartoon character for Sprite was like, "Oh, what'd you win?" You know, like what'd you win? Like you just played a game, you won, but what you get anything? And then he has like his cap, like he wins something from playing or participating in a game. And nowadays, though, it's like there is stuff you win from video games. There's scholarships yeah. for colleges. There's esports teams, and sure. the world's really transformed. So I think it's uh you know it's an interesting time to be alive. Crypto, NFTs, gaming, content. Uh, the world is uh, moving fast, and and yeah, and it's, it's cool to be a, a part insane, of something yeah. and have a. And have I mean, a community. This kind of live streaming as well as you're doing now and podcasts and and um, just be a part of something and you can you can I mean the chat is going uh, going right now you can talk to people that you you can have a relationship with people you just saw on maybe some kind of TV shows before WPT shows and now you can talk to people they can answer and you can have a, a relationship with those ones it's a lot of fun and and also i mean that's all it's really big in esports and that's how i got into streaming i watched some some like just uh, tv uh, what do you call it video games online uh, i started watching that oh oh they streaming on twitch you can, and and i saw that they started building like communities around uh, around streamers and uh, yeah. they could talk to a streamer that was really it was really good in some kind of some some video game and uh yeah yeah it's uh it's a, it's a crazy it is it's a fascinating time to be alive i almost feel it's it's like you know tipping point right place right time bill gates was around like a computer that he got to yeah. play with and sort of use and these type of things where it's interesting like in a way i feel like we we got it, but we kind of missed it, right? Like it would have been, imagine like, yeah, 10 years earlier, right? It would have been great. Cause like there was a good chunk from 2000, like four or five playing online for a good 10 years without Twitch, without, without yeah. any of this stuff. Like it would have been, you know, to be this age and start and you see some 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds that are like building massive Twitch communities and streamers sure. and, and whatnot. So it's, uh, it's cool, but I feel like we are a little older, you know, we're 35 and 40 for, for we're, we're on that. We're on that, but, yeah, but that's I, I good. We're mature. We know what now we know what we're doing <laughs> yes we're we exactly we're we we had a little experience and and you know i think it is actually very unique there's not many uh let's just talk in the gaming uh sphere sector you know you got lex House, you know yourself you know i i put myself in there too because i have that live experience i played live events i played big buy-ins i played big cash and so have you right it's kind of nice to have that whereas like a lot of the twitch top twitch guys they're just like they're full. They're they're just they're online guys, which is cool. But it's like kind of interesting and unique to have both yeah. sides of it, right? And I think yeah, that's uh, something very unique that you bring. Lex brings. There's a few others as well, but most of the guys, if you look at the Twitch streamers, they're just sort of like through and through Twitch yeah. only online. So um, I think that's also pretty cool. And yeah, uh, we have the. I mean, we. I, I think both of us has has been through the whole poker boom, uh, ups and downs, Black Friday and and everything that, that happened. So uh, I mean, that's uh, that's of course it's experience and uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, I see the chat is we uh, wanted to take up a, a couple of good things that we're trying to do also in the in the gambling cabin is, is we have a lot charity. of charity. I want to ask yeah, you about charity. charity. I, mean, I see yeah. that mentioned right now, so that was actually my next. I did see that just get popped in. Can you tell me a little about what which ones you focus on, what charities and stuff you guys do? No, we did did a couple of. Uh, things that uh, are close to heart. I mean, we did did for Suicide Zero that uh, focuses on mental health. I think that's uh, something that's really important to just both give money to, but also bring up and talk about. I think, and especially now during the pandemic, that's been a, 
uh, a big issue for people. They try, they have to stay home, and um, it can be really hard. And also, I mean, that ha that that is a big problem in a society. Is uh, uh, is mental health uh, problems, uh, and especially also like I mean, poker is a lot of men playing. So, and I don't think that that uh, us guys maybe talk about that as much as we should. And that can be ha have really bad consequences. So we we did a couple of um, streams about that, and I've, I've also given percentages of my bigger wins to 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 that, and um, and also some some personal things. Both my my mom and my sister got uh, breast cancer within like six months. Uh, so we did a couple of, uh, and also um, a, a, um, pretty pretty known Swedish. Um, Poker player also got really bad uh, uh, testicle cancer. So, so in the same time, it was a lot. So we do a couple of streams for for uh, fundraising for cancer, and also like breast cancer in specific. Um, and um, the last one we did uh, uh, just before the Euros. Now that was um, uh, domestic violence, and that's also like during the, this um, pandemic, it's been a big subject and. Um, so we we we, uh, we try to give back and we try to 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 do stuff that um, uh, takes up these subjects because sometimes it's hard to talk about and so, and uh, I think that um, this is really important things. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really it is mental health is it's no joke I and mean, we saw you know wreckful and and there's some other high profile stuff i mean twitch is twitch and yeah. online gaming too people are if you're in front of a computer and you're kind of it's it's a lot right like the, the people in sure. all different genres and spaces and athletes and you know from anyone anyway all the way up people you would yeah, never you can see during the olympics yeah. now a lot i mean th these kind of things naomi osaka and uh your uh, i don't remember her names the gymnastic star the us yeah. one i mean it's huge. Yeah, I mean, I listen. So, speaking of Olympics, Michael Phelps, one of my best friends. I live with him for seven years, and he's like the face of talk space. And you know, like yeah. someone like that, he's got wow. twenty three gold medals, and it's like, oh, like he's got to be super happy and all the time, and everything's great. And he's a hero. And it's like, no, he deals with real stuff, and you know, him being yeah. vulnerable, opening up, talking about that, sharing that, like that, that. Actually, they're very those type of those type of uh, Olympic Olympic athletes in particular. They have a lot of trouble because of the highs, right? Like it's like you go yeah. four years, you get one moment, even the even if you have success it's like hard to get back to that type of feeling i think also and i mean again you could say it's for poker for business yeah. for all kinds of stuff poker, i think poker is huge for that as well yeah yeah you hit these highs right you win a big tournament or and then you go and like the it's, it's so important to keep even keeled when it's not yeah. going well when it's going well you don't get too high or low because uh it's yeah. easy to kind of get and the stress of, level in cool. poker could be really i, I mean I, i've had problems with, with the stress levels so uh, this is this is also something like uh, personal for me so yeah. um i mean yep. i remember when i when i i won this uh, scoop for 300k um plo event two years ago so and and i was just after that i was like i was home like just in my in my couch in bed for two days i was just totally exhausted like i i and i had i, I didn't feel happy just for those two days i just try i knew that was like uh um what do you call it? Uh, it was hormones, or what? Like it was endorphins. Endorphins. Uh, that I was tired of that, and then it came back, of course. But but it, I, I had to endure that afterwards because I, it was so intense. Um, actually, this was fun, the WPT, because I wasn't nervous. I wasn't. I had nothing. Like I didn't. I was. Uh, I just had fun with it. So uh, maybe maybe I learned a little bit and and learned to deal with that as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a real it's a real thing. It's a it's definitely a real sure. thing, and that that's amazing cause that you guys do. What is uh what is your I guess what what would be I would say not struggle, but do you have a hard time saying no? I mean, at this point, right? It's so fun. There's so many different things that sure. sports betting, poker, do this. You have a you have a child, eight year old. Yes. Like, how do you have time to? Do you ever yeah. feel find yourself struggling to like organize or like do? It's yes. like almost too much over stimulus of like what you want to do and and how do you how do you balance yourself? Yeah. No, a friend of mine told me that uh, I need to start start saying no, <laughs> and like uh, and also like if it doesn't feel like like a huge yes, you should just say no. <laughs> right. So, but it's it's hard when you do a lot of things. It's a lot of fun things, and um, and uh, sometimes you want to do you want to clone yourself and do everything. So, uh, but uh, I think it's 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 a lot about also planning and having like uh, as I did now having like. A, do, do exercise and try to focus on other things, like some personal things, friends and family. 
and try to have the balance, as I said before. Um, and um, and then 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 if you miss miss out some opportunities, so be it. Um, but yeah. uh, try try to just. Uh, um, Yes. And I, yeah. I think, again, this is sort of, it's, it's like almost similar to, I think quali the quality over quantity debate on uh, like tables. It's like, it's sort of a metaphor, right? It's like do you, there's, there's, there's right now every day across the board, there's just an overload of tournaments. There's 500s, 1Ks, 2Ks, 5K, like great events, right? So do you choose four and like focus hard? And if you bust, come in another, or do you, do you, do you rapid fire 10 and like try to get a stack yeah. and then focus? And like how, so many times <laughs> where I'll play two or four, my day yeah. is so much better. First of all, you're yeah. not exposed. You, you're buying risk. You focus better. It seems to go better when you do 10, you know, like yeah. a Sundays, it's like, Oh, like whatever, let me just flick in this 500, you know, whatever late reg it. And then all of a sudden bust or, you know, lose a flip. And then all of a sudden something's going crazy. And now the day can end and it's the worst than that. So like, I think that's like similar to trying to do everything. And I struggle with that myself, podcast, streaming, YouTube fan, like it's just hard to, to, to kind of balance. So I don't know. I'm always trying to figure out the better way. And I do have a hard time saying no as well. It's like, Oh, like do this or double up on that. And, um, I think it's, a. Yeah. It's a, it teaches zone, right? You got it. You kind of live and learn, and and you you learn to uh, to maybe to to. I to think it's really more. important to have a, to 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 know about this because you, you're aware of it, and and uh, and then you just try to find a balance. Maybe you maybe you make make some like more closely planning the the whole week before, and right. then you just try not to to like uh, do too much other stuff beyond that, and uh, say no to everything else. Maybe you have some. Maybe you need some. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Filter between you and uh, and some agent or some friend or someone that, that yeah. helps you with this if you have a problem with it. So yeah, I mean, I mean, but 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 it's also a good thing that you have a lot to do that you have you want to do these things. You you're positive about it, but but it can be an overload, of course. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah, for sure. And I, yeah, it's all good. Listen, it's a good problem to have. I think that's like yeah. something that is overstimulated. It's like it's it's better than being understimulated in a lot of ways. And then if you can make some cuts and hone in and 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 optimize. But um, yeah, very very cool. Let's uh let's take let's take some uh let's make sure we take some questions. I know we got a lot. We're gonna uh there's a lot lot more I want to ask you, but I see a lot of questions here that are kind of overlapping. So I want to make sure we get to, to ask for the, the people engaging again, $109 phase ticket on party poker. If you guys get in this, you can bag a stack and play the 530 mega, I believe 50 seats into the 5,300. I actually won my way into the, into the phase, into the 530, into the 53. And now I'm on day two. So guys, it can happen. Nice. You can bag it, you can run it. And uh, I hope I'm, you I'm guys... also like in the, in the phase for the 25 K I, 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 I was facing, I have 300 K in the stack. I think it's if you buy into the qualif the five I think it's twenty five hundred if you buy into the and then you get five hundred K. So I'm a little bit short maybe but uh, still I got in for two for five hundred. So I'm I'm in the race for the twenty five K. That's Texas. that's amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I should I'm gonna have to take a shot at one of those too. That is actually they give you the blinds usually roll back as well. So if you bag like ten or twelve blinds the, the yeah. stack you actually like when it when it uh converts into the main thing it, you have a much more as well like uh, i think this is a super smart thing to, to do the face uh, yeah the face qualifications and and also i mean the value that has been during this series and overlays in the in the satellites i think everybody should take a look at that now i'm no i know i'm not sponsored by party but but it's uh it it, it, it has been really good and uh, all the all the satellites and uh take a look at those ones i mean if you if you or playing anyways you should uh, you should uh, just grab the value i think a lot of play players don't or are, are a little bit bad at that thing that, yes uh, if it's so much overlay in, in satellites you should just take the value and then and then um and then get lucky and play the events later yeah i, I there, there was a tournament on sunday on party poker it was a 530 knockout like 75k guarantee at the end of the day roughly like one of the last ones on the schedule i got 53k in the prize yeah. pool. It was twenty thousand dollar overlay on a 75k tournament it's insane um so yeah. yeah keep an eye on that definitely a lot of value and and, I, and party definitely overlays sometimes i'm not sure the other sites but let's let's dive over here we're going to cover a few more things i do want to invite you guys actually before we take questions i want to ask about this one tournament uh, WSOP main event in the uh, Europe 2008. You had yeah. uh, your biggest score. Tell me a little bit about this before we go and give people a chance to do the questions. What, yeah. what happened here? How was this? Yeah, as I said, we traveled a couple of years and playing the tour. I was sponsored by Betfair. It was uh, like uh, a betting company. It's still pretty big in, in Europe. Um, 
and um uh, but this was this was like one year after i i i stopped like traveling a lot i started staying at home a little bit more and not and traveling because I, we, we were tri almost traveling half half the year and playing we play, we were playing uh, live games cash games we were playing online on the travels and we played some some high stakes tournaments but this one was uh, almost my last like tour tournament uh, and uh, yeah i came fourth it was it was a stacked uh, final table it's a lot of Fun people, John Joanna won it, and then was uh, Ima, Ivan Demidov coming third. He, I think, he came second in the WC SOP main event the same year. It was pretty crazy. And then yeah. Danny Negrano came fifth, and uh, there was a couple of other guys as well. So that was like a really stacked tournament with big pros. And uh, uh, yeah, I think I played well. Uh, I got lucky as well. If you if you watch the the YouTube streams afterwards, you can see me getting lucky a couple of times, and that's good. <laughs> It's nothing wrong with that. You know, <laughs> no. I, I, I got to ask you about variance because in PLO, you said you've been running well, which all the, the humble greats say, but you know, it is, there is so much variance in poker in tournaments and it's crazy, right? Like, like a two outer or you get there and get re get there or a flip on the river. These can make a year or there can be the difference yeah. between a massive score. How do you mentally uh, deal That's with really variance tough. and really understand when you're, when you're running well or playing well, how are you able to be uh, honest with yourself on that? And is it, and is, it's hard, isn't it? To find, to know sometimes. I try to be really um, uh, my biggest critic myself. Uh, I tend to like uh, watch over the hands I played, but some, sometimes you, you don't watch the hands where you got lucky though, where you play bad and maybe you got lucky, but, but I try to look through the hands and really like, did I, did I play this? bad or or should i done something different but um uh to get back to your question about uh, variance uh i like to play the lower field tournaments overall because i i think it's these huge tournament fields there are so huge 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 variance as well um and uh i don't know uh this that's uh, i i i enjoy much more like being able to to see the final table in front of me um and um and having a having a bigger shot at the title and also playing ICM much more. If you play the, the big tournaments that that are like huge fields, there are so few times you get to play ICM poker. I mean that's I mean I think that I think that's the most fun fun part of playing poker is like having all the ICM pressure, knowing that people have pressure on themselves, like right. uh, and and almost being back to like uh feeling their emotions about these situations if you play uh, the, the, the bigger the bigger field tournaments there are so many like th there, there aren't those kind of situations a lot of times uh, that it's uh that it's other factors than than just playing your hand actually that that, that has but if you play the the, the lower uh, the lower lower field tournaments uh, it's much more factors that that, that uh, you have to think about for sure. And, and, and how is, uh, give me like a little PLO kind of strategy or tip just kind of d down the stretch. I think a lot yeah. of the most interesting times are like the final table bubbles of PLO or sure. just like down that, you know, final 12, 15 players as it gets really deep. Um, you know, give me sort of like some mistakes you see people make or just some areas that maybe, yeah. uh, I, I, I actually mean, honestly find I struggle this portion, at least uh, part of it's running too, right? Like I, I have so many, it's hard again. Like I look, I'm like, oh, I'm getting a lot of twelfths or fourteenths and deep in mm. these 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 tournaments. But I can't, it's hard for me to know if I'm like just making mistakes. I feel like I'm running bad, but then again, that's what the fish say, right? They're running bad. Yeah, <laughs> but I I, th I think that probably that the I think you play probably play well, but I think that I think that just the ICM uh, situations are the thing that people are making the biggest mistakes in, um, and I think that. Um, I probably I I've ICM punted so many times. It's yeah. I mean, it's ICM suicides. But it can all also help you a little bit if people want know know that you are you, you have a you're not scared. Crazy. Yeah, they, yeah. They they then it's really hard for them to do to to uh, like uh, do something stupid or do something that's marginal against you because they know you're 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 insane <laughs> you're not, you're not, exactly that so, is, yeah uh, if, you, if you establish that enough you can maybe use yeah. it to your advantage yeah 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 so so that, that's like a it's a thin line to walk and i, I crossed it a lot of times <laughs> uh but uh, i think that that you have to like be aware of that and also from for for other people that that um how they think in these situations and uh, um i think that's i think that's a really interesting part about omaha tournaments especially as you said that before that in 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 Texas, if you have like ace king, aces, kings, queens, jacks, and so on, you, the money is going in 
in some ways um but uh in and and, and you can be like an 80 20 favorite and you have to push it i mean but but in but in, in texas in, in in plo it's always 60 40 it's always this 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 flip kind of situations and you're taking a flop with 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 a run down hand and and then the other guy has aces and 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 you're out so it, then then the icm gets so even more interesting that uh, a chip lead gets stronger in plo than it gets in uh, in uh, in uh, in texas because that you can take it you, if, if you raise every hand then you you can you can you can call the the, the re-raise in many of the times and then the person that that uh, that re-raise you are in trouble many of the times uh, right. so it's i mean yeah it's it's it, 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 it is fascinating because I mean. There's so many times in PLO, like having that stack near the money bubble is yes. so huge, right? Like that's huge. the fascinating huge. part. Cause like there's so many PLO tournaments. I do remember battling you know, last year, I think a party and, and we were obviously were in the same, some of the same high stakes PLO fields. Like it's just an interesting point where there's like 10 yeah. off the money, five off. You're kind of like, okay, healthy. And then and next grabbing thing you know, that cheap lead is important. Yeah. Maybe then taking that flip, flip. maybe now, taking the crazy flip when it's, when it's yeah. 20 people people left it's 11 maybe it's 11 prices and it's 20 yeah. people left and you're taking you're taking the shot you're taking the flip you you know you know it but you're getting the chip lead then you can kill the tournament from there so that's 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 the, the kind of things that stuff that uh, you could think about in a pillow tournament in another way that maybe then in a text tournament um right so yeah because uh, when you go in if you're if you're crawling in when there's 13 14 left and you have like 12 yep. 15 blinds it's brutal because like then all yep. of a sudden you like make it and you have four blinds and you just yep. have to pass all these spots and you're just like all right make yes. cash move yes. on you know it's yes. tricky yes so and then and, and then i mean many of the tournaments are so top heavy so it's really important to win it especially if the, there are bounties involved as well so maybe you should take the the chance when it's 20 people left but but it's hard also because um Maybe if you play the lower stakes tournament, then then people don't care about ICM as much, and then you have to adjust to that. So you know you have to know your opponents. Uh, so it's it's kind of tricky. Yeah, that's why it's fun. That's why it's a beautiful game. It's yeah. like the it's a perfect perfect game. We start getting a five card, six card gets a little crazy. I'm waiting <laughs> to see more. Crazy. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see. I, I I got a feeling in the next two years that we'll start seeing like major. You know, it'll be five card W WPTs and six yeah. card and stuff. It, it it's only it's only inevitable. Um, but let's uh, uh real quick before I keep finding more things I want to ask you. But um, uh, there's there's a lot of really good questions here, and we do want to give a chance for this. 109 uh ticket what what is what's your breakdown of sites right now what do you what do you what percentage of your pie do you give to the, the various sites for like um, your action? yeah um, or is it uh, changes i imagine with series and stuff yeah absolutely I, I i do play where where the action is but uh the thing is that my role is basic uh we were talking about like the 5k uh swedish the the 500 dollar limit and uh, I'm I'm rolled on 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 party poker, so I, I play try to play the bigger events there, and then uh, then I um, then I have a little bit of an issue on on poker stars. Maybe I I do have some some, but I can't play the biggest event. I can't play, play the big events there. So it's 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 kind of annoying uh, that thing. So that's why I haven't been grinding as much uh, because uh, if if you do bust on one side, then you can't play there. Um, but uh, so, so, so I, I would say that I play mainly on party poker right now. If I, if I play, try to play, um, uh, um, yeah, the grind sure. the series and so, and so on. For sure. Um, okay. Uh, very, very well. That's good to hear. So let's let's dive in. Let's try to get. Let's try to attack some of these. If we think there's more stuff along the way, we've covered a lot. Very, very interesting. Uh, we really appreciate Ben on here, fresh off his win, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and I see some. So there's gonna be some language barrier issues. So I don't know if you can read this on my screen, um, but actually some of this might just be. Uh, and also, as I said, like GG Poker isn't uh, it's not available available right now in Sweden. So otherwise, I'd probably play on, on there. I mean, there is a lot of action there. I heard, and uh, it looks nice, but yeah, I don't know. For sure. Uh, what do you think the biggest mistake a Holden player makes when starting to play PLL? This is from Craig Leonard on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, it is a completely different game. So you, you probably overvalue your hand in in uh, a lot of situations, and uh, you also you it's harder to ident identify situations where you could bluff, where you could make a hero call, 
and uh, what to do in situations where you have a ha different kind of hands pre-flop that flops not the nuts but it flops decent or or no repair it's it's a lot of situations that can be be really like confusing and if you are confused in poker if you don't know uh the situations by heart it's gonna be hard to play it's it's that's 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 uh that's how it uh runs out i mean i feel like that a little bit in in, in holem i know when, when, if i get to think about for two minutes a hand i probably make the best play or close to it but instinctively i i don't think my brain doesn't really I'm impressed with people that are really good in PLO and really good in Texas. And that there are those poker players that are like geniuses and, and world class in both. But I'm not I'm not one of those. I can focus right. on one game, I think, and be and be good at it. But and the other game I can be decent at. But uh, yeah. my brain doesn't doesn't really think in, in no limit like uh, situations as good as as good as PLO. I need to, I need I think I, a big mistake that I feel I make too in some of these, especially with playing six, eight 10 tables on like a Sunday and I'm in PLO, I'm in different format tournaments, knockouts, regulars. It's uh, it's acting too fast. Like there's definitely yeah. times in PLO where like I'll be on the river. There was like an Omaholic series going on, on, on uh, GG. It was very good events. And like, it was like, I have enough flush, the board would pair in the river and it would just be like a guy would jam and I would be like, you know what, or whatever. It's just like quickly yeah. acting, not thinking and just like a clear plays where they're like, if, man, if we could take back our punts, our terrible calls, and like, <laughs> like, like, cause like you said, we're playing one table and you're dialed yeah. in, you're following the action, you just exactly. know what's going on, you know the player, what he's capable of, what he's not, you're going to make the right choice most of the time. But when it's like, yes. you know, this, that, quickly, and you just, yeah, there's a lot of mistakes made. So um, I, think I think that's a, that's a really good point, that if you're playing PLO, trying to learn, don't play many tables. Just try to play one, two, maybe two tables, and really focus on what the other players are doing. Because if you do that, you get such a huge edge. Uh, and also, yeah. I, I try to do that... that uh, when I play Texas a little bit more, that if you, if you are if I play a bigger event, uh, maybe if I play the five k on 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 party or or on stars, then I try to play that table, maybe one side table, just to be occupied with something. But then really focusing on what's going on on the table, and then I, I usually play pretty good. Um, I'm not I'm not one of these crushers on, on on Texas, but I play decent when when I'm focusing. Uh, but when it gets to a lot of tables and th p things are happening everywhere, just you start just clicking buttons after a while. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it definitely can be the case. Um, I gotta, I gotta ask you, uh, again, I, sorry, I get this. I keep my, my dad actually sent some questions in. he's fascinated with poker and nice. he gives some good questions and, and he wanted to ask you about, uh, your entrepreneurial spirit and outlook given, uh, the work with the gambling cabin. Did you study business in school and what subjects did you really enjoy? What was your, did you drop out? Did you go through college? What was your, your educational background? Yeah. Good question. No, I, I, I studied engineering. Uh, it was like, uh, it was business and engineering, the, the, it was some kind of middle ground, but I was going to be an engineer, and I did it for two years. But the second year, I started playing poker, um, and I did really well the first year. The second year, not so good. <laughs> so after after that year, I took uh, one year off to to try to play poker, and which I traveled some, uh, and that was mostly an excuse to start like playing as a pro. And then I I my, I was planning on coming back after that year, and. Um, uh, it's been 15 now, a little bit more. <laughs> For so, sure. Uh, yeah. Very cool. So I, I, I don't have a finished education. Um, so if if this if this thing ends, I'm I'm without a job. <laughs> I'm sure you know. You got a nice, you got a strong community backing support. I'm sure you'll be uh, you'll find something fun to do that you love and and passion yeah. with uh, with fans. So um, absolutely. Also, as a professional poker player, you've you've traveled all over the world. Uh, what are one or two places you visit that you really love? And is Sweden the best place to live in the world? I think Sweden is really good place to live. Actually, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like. Uh, I mean, I mean, th this discussion can be endless, but Sweden is, especially during the summer, is a great country to be in. I mean, um, but there are so many good places to be also. Um, and um, yeah, I, I would like to start. I mean, it's hard, really hard. I have my daughter, and I have her every other week now, so it's hard to to go go away traveling for a long time. Uh, but when she gets a little bit older, I would probably start traveling a little bit more, uh, and also like 
during the pandemic here it's been impossible to travel uh, but uh, no i like I, I traveled a lot in south america i love love that i was in argentina uruguay i was in brazil uh chile i mean uh, ecuador but and so i mean i've been there a couple of times and been traveling and also i was in australia a great country um asia of course uh, so i've been around just traveling not playing poker but poker wise uh, i mean i think poker wise it's hard to beat vegas i mean it's really hard to beat vegas i mean the, there are the, the tournaments that are so well organized compared i mean maybe there are some good casinos in in europe nowadays they are organizing really well but back in the days it wasn't it wasn't close to vegas vegas was i mean so much better uh, the poker rooms the uh, the whole casinos you can stay at the casino just go down you can go up in a break you could you can have dinner at great places you can have fun be between between tournaments and uh, and uh, there are all kinds of levels of tournaments and and um, uh, good value most of the time so vegas is is i mean think, i think it's the best place for poker but yeah it's hard to, it's hard to debate that what about uh the 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 casino daddy i know they that he's been on my podcast massey brothers they're they're very popular yeah. and have a nice very very big content community i know they, they stream across the different platforms are you guys connected affiliated do you know each other uh actually we aren't no we we we, we we aren't affiliated in any ways. We don't work together. But uh, I know I, I've been talking to Masse. He was on my stream actually, um, and we played a heads up heads up match for fun. Uh, I think I I, I won, but uh, I win against everyone that I challenge on the stream. So that's not news. <laughs> I love it. That's great. It's uh, be in the no, we, we actually like help you in uh, poker after dark. You know, it's hard to beat, yeah. right? It's very yeah, rare. exactly. Yeah, a good record. No, I, I did a couple of like those challenges. I, we had uh, Liana nine hundred on a couple of times. Uh, he got to sit down also, and uh, we had uh, now we had a lot of like I mean, Jay Nanis was on on one time. He was uh, sitting down the whole stream, I think. Uh, he had a really hard, hard time against me. And, nice. uh, <laughs> Very cool. No, no, I mean, that's just for fun. We're playing, we're playing for fun. And, uh, but it's, it's serious. We played like, we played like 10, 20, 25, 50 PLO heads up and stuff like that. So it's, you know, but it's only Very for cool. a couple of hours. Um, Very cool. Yep. Very cool. And speaking of those guys, I mean, some content there with Jay Nandez and as of course, have you guys as a gambling cabin, is there a, is there any plans for content uh, like curated courses or, or coaching? Do you guys do that? Uh, we've been talking about that a little bit, but uh, we, we had like, um, uh, we, we never want to, like charge people for content that's like the one of the base things we we uh we we we, we had in in the gambling cabin so we did a couple of free um videos uh in uh on our youtube channel that was uh uh both uh, plo uh, i went through one of my plo wins for a 5k tournament but that's in swedish also so it's uh maybe you have to have a translator or something like that if you're if you're english but uh yeah. and then we did a lot for uh, Dian. Uh, Perry Mason, uh, he did uh, um, al um, like anal analysis for uh, Texas No Limit, and he, I mean, he's insanely good in that one. So, I mean, if you haven't, if you want to have some free content that should be that should be expensive, then you, then you should go look at that one. But it's in Swedish, as, as I said. That maybe we'll do that a little bit more in english mm -hmm. uh, if we start streaming in english we do some content for that as well but uh, right now we don't have anything in english uh, so okay uh, i got my man bakala is in the chat he's talking about a couple of things he said one you don't mention the time when <laughs> you cannot have made uh Bengen sit down sorry man Yo, this, uh, yeah like, yeah my, 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 he, he yeah. made me sit a couple of guys maybe sit down too so so that's uh that's that's right here, correct right? but this i don't mention right that we don't mention that He's mentioned it's my things. podcast. Uh, that's true. Well, sorry, I won't. I won't blurt out any more on uh, from the chat. But he also mentions about. He says, "I don't know. I'm not familiar with uh, Tilt, Tilt Dad and Clark. Is this these two guys here, or who is that? What is it? He's saying you should invite Jeff to Tilt, Tilt the Lad and Clark. Yeah, yeah. We should do. We should do. We should do. Uh, you should be in our podcast. We had a. Um, we have a called podcast called Tilted and Ready. <laughs> ah, tilted and ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, that's but that's the sweet part. But we do. We had. A, we had the, also in English uh, a couple of uh, episodes. So that's uh, just yeah. We we that'd, should do that as well. That'd be fun. No, I'd, I would. Def, I'd love to. I'd love to do that. I got actually a, a PLO hand for you, and uh, it's un, it's unfortunate that this was from yesterday, and I don't have um, the full 
clip it looks like but let me just see so the action picks up here let me just uh it's unfortunate i mean look you can kind of see so this is a, a plo ultrasonic very fun event on party tonight um please uh, don't start playing it because usually it's the end of my stream and it's very good value but um anyway i get to a flop in position it can't be too bad i have jack king 10 uh, 10 with the suit right as you see it was only 15k in the middle uh the blinds i don't see a scenario where i don't get to a a flop i think it was probably like uh, i opened maybe yeah, it's uh, a good hand pre-flop. Yeah, but I think I think you should be more careful on the flop there. I think you should probably just flat on the flop or or maybe fold even. I mean, okay. So th this was a this was a this was a this was a debate. So the guy came in yeah. here. This guy Bill, who's an yeah. amateur player, he admittedly uh, that yeah. he looks forward to this event every day, and he basically rifled think, off in the chat. I, I, I would have I would have flatted it, um, but okay. yeah, I mean I mean it's, it's never really bad. I mean. It's right. just that it can be if you're up against like uh with you can be up against kings with 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 not flush draw. I mean that's a, a lot of times you're up against like uh, with pair with not flush draw and stuff like that. And then you're and then you're like uh, yeah you're you're getting in uh, a lot of money. I don't know how see how much you have in front of you, but it's uh it seems like a We're lot. Uh, on that yeah, floor. we did, we had we had yeah. a lot. Like look, again, this is a little context. It's a it's an ultrasonic. It's a super turbo. It's yeah. uh, it, it's. Fun. But I mean, it's that's like the thing. Up. I do that also. But I think the the GTO play is just to, to flat there. I, I, I would I would I would assume. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, whatever. This uh, just just I, again, it can't be too bad. The fact that I don't have the nut draw, right? That's that's sort of yeah. the issue. Like the problem my, is that I'm, one one guy can have a. I mean, now now you have one guy calling over there as well. Yes, one guy can have the the three nines. Ooh, and one guy can have. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did he I mean, have the nut flush draw? No, he didn't have the nut draw. Okay, no, yeah, so, so he, he, it was it went. I mean, now it was a perfect situation for you this time. So yeah, I yeah. think that that's the issue with the hand though, because if it's against the bigger flusher, I'm in I'm really bad shape. Yeah, um, the two opponents. One can have one can have the top set. One can have like uh, uh, open ended with the nut flush draw, and you're pr pretty much like dead. So. That's, right, that's the problem. So, I don't all know. right, fair enough. Yeah, if, no, if, if you're flat thing and, and the, the other guys both go all in, maybe you could probably fold as well. Then, so right, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, it's definitely a little spew. That's not my I like to play post flop and, and not just get it all in and, and rip it. But yeah, yeah this is a, a hand where the guy, I mean, I, honestly, the, the flat pre too, like the guy flatted king deuce nine nine, no suits, pretty bad <laughs> hand, right? Like, yeah, uh, I mean, that's I always say that that when you play those kind of hands and you get bad beat, it you, you have your yourself to blame i mean come on yeah because look at i mean this is i would say someone's asking a question on uh, as well like give some advice on for beginners like this is the kind of thing where these just like it doesn't seem like a big deal but even on the nine high yeah. seven three with the flop like a not even the favorite flop, almost, never yeah. have a really good flop and you have no, no. backup so it's just not a exactly, good hand yeah. But, but yeah after the flop maybe i made up yeah middle we're roll. talking about the big mistakes that people do in in uh, tech in texas players are doing and that's probably the biggest mistake is overvaluating pairs in their hands i mean especially like uh, the big pairs like kings uh kings queens jacks i mean i think kings is probably the just just kings for even for for uh medium medium good players or and uh, pretty good players that they're they are punting off with kings too 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 many of the times kings aren't i mean kings are a big problem because you're so many times when it's close to the money and and when and people are playing a little bit tighter so many times you're up against aces so if you have like re don't not really good kings you're gonna you're gonna uh, yeah what, what, running to aces so many times What's your cutoff for good medium kings? Like, where if you get kings, like, what's like you're like okay kings? Where you're like, all right, I'm happy yeah. to play a big pot if I had to. Like, where, where's the cutoff? For you me? have to have connected cards with the with the kings. Right. I mean, and, and suits most of the time. If you have double, if you have double suited king king jack ten, then I mean, just throw it in there. I mean, then you're 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 more than forty percent against aces. So I mean, then it's then it's then it's never bad. But uh, sometimes you can just like you you try to like three pop kings and then you're like you're 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 stuck in a situation that's really bad against aces many of the times for sure um so sometimes you can just open full kings or even like yeah and, and and fall to fall to races and i think that many people just that play that they feel so bad in their gut to fall kings um right. and also didn't make that mistake i mean tens of i mean a lot of times that i overplayed kings uh, but you learn yeah, that's uh, 
that's 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 good advice. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's also like it's only a small mistake to fold in PLO in these spots too, right? It's like not the end of the world if you just kind of move on or you get some resistance when you're not sure just to move on. Um, all right, well, let's make sure let's take let's try to get get through some of these. There's a lot. Look at this. A lot of look at the community yeah. here. And if you guys I are have watching, about ten minutes more. I have to get my daughter in twenty. So perfect. We it's can yeah. We'll, we'll cut it. Let's do. We'll do like five minutes more uh, of questions, and then we'll do a giveaway, perfect. and then we'll uh, we'll roll. So. Um, yeah. Do you, any other games as hobbies? Chess. We talked paddle tennis. What other games do you like uh, to do as a hobby? Um, I don't play chess, but I think that's uh, yeah. I, I don't know uh, games. Mm, I, I it's racket sports mostly. Uh, I play as sports um, games. I I mean it's just video games where, where you play some some Zelda on your Nintendo. But uh, that's that's that's. Nice. Do you have some? Do you have some games you play? Yeah, I mean, I I do I enjoy I enjoy backgammon. Not not great at it. I do yeah. uh, paddle tennis. I love soccer. I mean, we, as you yeah. know, football played through through college. So I mean, that, that that's fun for me. But um, yeah, not not too much time for for too many games. I don't play video games really anymore. I love FIFA. I used to play FIFA, but not yeah. much anymore. So um, yeah, it's you know. it's about time, huh? That's 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 the problem. But yeah. I, I make time to 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 uh, to play paddle tennis or other rocket sports. I mean that's uh, that's the highlight of the day many of the times. I mean I really love to to play those. So for sure, for sure. Um, I don't know if you can answer this. Maybe you're too in the space and competitive, but maybe you're you're not, and you don't mind saying uh, who is the most difficult PLO player to face in the world in your opinion right now? Or give me give me a couple names, maybe not just one. Uh, is there any, any names you could throw out there? I don't want to give you show your weakness or vulnerabilities, but who who any PLO crushes you could give some credit to? Uh, I mean, there are so many good ones, um, but for PLO tournaments, I mean, you have to you have to mention the Finns. That's the problem. <laughs> they are really good. I mean, Elis and and um, and the, the whole crew with with um, uh, Lusak and all, all all those guys. And uh, uh, I mean, they 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 are really good. So I mean, that's that's just just how it is. Um, but there are also some really good Swedes as well. With Anton Saras was was um, he was came third in this tournament where I won. Yep. He is a good short track, short track. He plays a lot of heads up. And then we have the Hungarian crew. I mean, uh, Omaha for rolls. He plays Texas as well. He's, he seems to crush everything. Uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, that's also really good in 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 all the games. That's, that's crushing Texas. He's also Hungarian. I now I my, my, I. Yeah, I don't rem- I, yeah, yeah. I know who so, you're thinking. Um, I know who you're talking about. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a there's a and what Galfond, about Galfond? Of course. I mean, oh, I mean Galfond. That's. I mean, I, I'm so impressed with him. Of course. I, what can you say that that he what he done? Uh, yeah, that's pretty. And, and yes, yes, he's challenging every every good PLO heads up player in the world, and and just and just uh, does it. Then yeah. Wins, and that's 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 just yeah, it's amazing. That's give gives a little bit hope for us old timers, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. Pro beers. Sure. That's what. Yeah. That's and, what, and what about Yoni? Yeah, tar- team party poker. Yeah, uh, Yoni. Of course, yeah. Yoni. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, he, he. I mean, he, I think he's crushing all Texas as well. But, but the whole that whole crew, they have a they have an office. He's been on the stream a couple of times as well. They have an office in Helsinki. They are teaming up. They are playing paddle. They are they are playing especially Omaha. They are streaming nowadays. So they are really doing, uh, I mean, great work, and and also, I mean, it's hard to know exactly how it's going, but it seems that they are crushing. They they're playing really well in the in the PLO events. Uh, yeah, but but I mean, they, they yeah. What what about PLO eight? Do you like that game? Do you play high low? Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. That's a fun uh, WSOP event. I love uh, playing those ones. Like, those yeah, are I have ones. a Swedish championship title in that one. I have a. Uh, a power fest title in that one, but uh, I mean, I, I would say that that uh, it's not my. It's it's more that other people don't play it very well than me playing it very well. <laughs> yeah, and 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 how how, how uh, someone's just asking Rob Young or Sam Trickett in a PLO game. Did you see the game the other day at Cyprus? I I left that day. I was kicking myself because I thought they were playing Hold'em. I don't know if I could even. I was maybe could have got a seat. Did you see Tony, Tony G, Rob Young, Paul Floyd? Oh, did you yeah. see that high stakes game? Oh, uh, which one? The other day. No, yeah, oh, it was it, it, cash game? Yeah. 
No, I haven't seen it. You have to. Uh, you have to send I'll me send a, you link a link. Afterwards. It was very. Perfect. You know, it was a good game. How how much like how juicy would it be like in those lineups where guys like Leon and these guys like how I mean would it would it even be fair? Do you see a scenario where you could lose if you played like a ten hour session in that game? Um. Yes. Of course. I mean, they are. They're running it. I mean, that's uh, when when it gets to these uh, situations where it get, where it gets in the middle all the time. You could you could of course lose, um, but uh, it's it's a use game for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's. It, I mean, I, I would I would really love to play. I mean, the problem is that if you stay if you're just sitting there and playing really tight, then then you're never gonna get get to play. So you have to play uh, and have fun. But I really love to do that as well. I I, I mean, I've played a lot of cash games that where where you have to give some action to. To be fun, to to be to be able to sit there. So I'm I'm really used to that, and I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's some in some way it's good that uh, that they have uh, like um, these kind of private games that you have to be an action player to be in it. Uh, in some ways it's bad, of course, for for everyone, but in some ways it's um, um, I mean that. Then you, then you have to adjust. You have to learn to play poker in a different way. And I think that's the most fun way, to play action poker, but still play it with an edge and play it well. I think that's uh, that's that, that's the most almost the most fun way to play poker. When you play a live cash game, you play at the casino, you play uh, anywhere, and uh, and you just... You don't just wait for situations, but you play, re you play real poker and, and do real uh, reads and, and, and try to push the action. That's... That's a lot of fun. For sure. Um, all right. Well, listen, I, I, there's so many more questions. I mean, you have Twitter yeah. yourself. You guys can give him a follow. Ben Sonnert sure. on, on, on Twitter. Maybe he will uh, get a chance to answer because we're not going to have a chance to get to all these. Some really great questions, uh, as you can see. And I appreciate you guys. All that have entered are going to be eligible uh, for this. So real quick, I already entered the tweet. Let's do this. I'm going to let you uh, confirm uh, a winner. Let you tell me when I'll let you go pick up your child, eight-year-old. I can't, I, I have a child. I, I sympathize. I can't have them waiting, telling them you're doing yeah. content. So uh, 88 people eligible. I'm going to download the retweets and then you tell me when in a 109 phase into the 530, hopefully someone can parlay the dream into the 5,000 and then go from there. I did it. Uh, I was, you know, I, I satellite in. It's possible. I know last year there was Charlotte. Uh, she hit like a 600 K score. I don't know yeah, that was amazing. From, yeah, that was from a couple hundred dollars, yeah. maybe. So listen, it happens. It's here, and yeah. you tell me when, and I'm gonna choose a winner. Do I, uh, a number or just when? Just tell me when, and I'll click the button. It's RNG in. Okay, now. All right, here it is. Choose winner. I am sure we got one winner, and it is right here. One hundo four has got a ticket. Look at this. It looks fired up. Nice. He's got energy. He's blasting off. He's got rocket chips. He's ready to get in to the phase. Good win, my friend. I will message you. And you are now in a 109 phase ticket. Thank you for the support. And Ben, I know you got to run. I really do appreciate it, man. This was a, was a pleasure. It was a treat to have you. Thank you to your loyal community for being here. I see a lot of familiar faces from your win the other night. They were there railing when you took down the WPT 2100 uh, for 71,000. And uh, yeah, man, I know, again, Lex said it. If you want money, you just enter a tournament. You got a lot of high praise in the community. Hope to hope to collaborate, link up soon. Love to come on your guys' stuff anytime and uh, keep hosting Great. each other. I, I appreciate that from your end and then do the same and always look for you guys uh, on the on the street. So cheers. Cheers. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, man. I'll let you run. And uh, guys, we will close this down and we'll we'll hear more from Ben. Give him a follow on all the socials. I am going to send a raid and uh, we're going to catch up uh, for more streams. We got we got podcast tomorrow and the next day this week. I got Adrian Mateos and Darren Elias on next week, along as one other special guest. We're knocking out podcasts. Vince Van Patten as well. We're going to overload. We're streaming every nice. day. We're doing podcasts. My family is not super happy with me. But, um, you know, it's uh, one of those periods. It's September. It's time to roll. Anyway, you go to Cyprus. Any chance? Can you get there for uh, – for, um, Is it Merit? Merit one? Yeah, they have, I believe, a PLO as well, and they got the five – Yeah, I was, I was there a couple of times, actually. Not a really nice place. So, yeah, uh, I was there. I have to, Now I have to brag some more. I was there – this is almost like 10 years ago. Uh, it's also – I played like – I think I played four, four tournaments, and I came fifth, third, and won one. Wow. You see there? I think it says third, but we made a deal, I think, and I, I got first, but I got the first prize that. money. Yeah. There you go. So you've been, you know, yeah. 
uh you know you know you know it's so i thing. need to get back and just uh, continue the streak huh <laughs> yes i i love it is, is that a, is that eligible for you guys um is that are you able to get there right now with the restrictions and laws or is that not a, a i think i think we can yeah i mean I sweden is really like like um liberal with with our restrictions so it's about cyprus then but i think they we can get there as well but yeah We'll see. You, you send send me send me a link later. What what, what it's about, and, and we'll uh, we'll see. I, I just I can. It's September sixteenth to the twenty seventh. It's a five k five three mil or five mil, and they have oh, KLL okay. And it's a it's we a actually, series. We actually have something else, so I, I I don't think I can go because we're going to to the festival in Bratislava this time, and then that's uh, that's that's gonna be like poker and and uh, sports betting and some some like uh, side events and a lot of fun as well. So. If you're living nearby there, you can come and, and visit the whole cabin. We're going there and having fun. So when is that? That's uh, that's I think from the 21st to 26th of September. So it's uh, Tuesday. We're going. I think Tuesday to Sunday. We're going that way that week and just yeah. Very cool. Having man. a lot right. of fun in Bratislava. Bratislava. Slovakia. I, I, Slovakia. I love it. Well, I've never been there. That sounds cool. And hopefully maybe, I mean, I don't, I got to look at where, where, you know, we'll be, be in and out, but I'll let you go pick yeah, up. Look your it child. up. Look it up. The best yeah, yeah. Send me some info, man. We got each other's contact info now. I uh, really didn't uh, appreciate it. And uh, and it's great to see again, how supportive everyone is. And, and um, uh, I love the, I love your guys community. You guys have a very special, uh, special thing. And I wish you yeah. the best in the future in playing and uh, hopefully Same battle to you. it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, we'll talk again. Awesome. All right. Thanks okay. again, man. All right, Take guys. Care. Ben right. Sonnert, congrats to the winner. I'm going to message him on Twitter and we are going to send a raid. We're going to roll out. We're going to close it down. And I will be streaming the 5K 20 mil. Plus I am on day two of the 5,300 five mil on party poker. That is on Monday, September 13th. Still day one B and C. You can phase in for you know 44 into the 109 into the 530 there's a variety of, of paths to do that i wish you guys the best i hope you get in there i hope i play heads up with one of you and uh again gambling community the gambling cabin community is so strong so loyal so so engaging fun every time i've been a part of it or been around it i just like i, I don't know honestly the fans are so good they're so cool and uh really appreciate you guys being here thanks to ben for making the time thank you guys for being here and i appreciate you hit the follow button if you guys want to know when i go live i'm going to be streaming the next two weeks over two weeks every day i'm going to take a little break here and then come back on play some high stakes tournaments and uh you know we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time so i will uh i will see you very soon guys cheers